Hey, Skylar here from The Men Change You Can Wear, and welcome to Tool List version 3. Oh. All right, let's try this again. Before I started this one, I went and reviewed last year's Tool List. It's actually pretty good, so if you guys want to see it, I'll leave a link in the description box below for that. I noticed I did a really good job on doing the intro Tool List on that one. And I'm not going to spend nearly as much time doing that on this one. But one thing I will do is I will leave a link to the three really awesome starter setup videos that I do have. It'd be Forge Book 1 is the most basic, and then Forge Book 2 is a little bit more advanced. And then I have a third one actually that's kind of a hybrid between the both, and it's got some new technique. I'll also leave that video in the description box too. That's one thing I really like to focus on a lot, and the reason being is I really take this seriously. You guys are getting a good way to get into this hobby, or this craft. I've pretty much split up the tools into categories from where you can get them, so we're gonna start with Jason's Works. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over with Jason's Works is just the Master Deluxe Kit. I think that's what they're calling it, it's a Master Deluxe Kit. That's pretty much all the main tools that you need, not just to get started, but to make pretty much any coin ring you want. And now you can order as little or as much of this as you want individually. I think you get a better discount when you get the whole deluxe kit at once. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. This is the first thing that we're going to be looking at. This is the Auto Punch by Jason's Works. This is by far the best punch and die kit that's out there. And what makes it so awesome, this thing auto centers the, any coin you put into it. So you can throw pretty much any coin from anywhere inside this thing and it's going to auto center it as you screw it down. And also, this base here will accept all kinds of different dies, basically, or punches. They go from quarter inch up to this big 7 8 inch one. I use this one a ton, actually. And then all sorts of sizes in between also. For any coin ring, this is the most basic part of it, is getting a perfectly centered hole. This makes it easy, you don't even have to think about it, it just happens. And that's why it works so good. And it stands up to the test of time. You could punch literally thousands upon thousands of coins with this and they're just gonna work. This also comes with the Master Deluxe Kit. This has all your folding cones. This is the Mega Stretcher for the ring stretchers. So just in case you get a size that's larger than the ring stretcher can accommodate, this will help you keep going farther beyond that. Um, you have all your different folding cones. These are the small ones. I find these little guys really helpful for when I'm fixing a wobbly coin ring. Oh, if you're interested in that video, check the description box below. Very, very helpful video for making coin rings. But my main two workhorses are these universal folding cones. You could get away with just using just a stainless steel folding cone. Really helpful. If you don't want it to scratch up your the inside of your coin rings, just wrap it in some Teflon tape. But what I like to do is start with this one and then finish with this composite folding cone. This one won't damage the inside of your coin ring, but it doesn't hold up nearly as well as a steel one. So I start with the steel one, so that way I don't put any wear and tear on this one when I first start. Also, the other thing that this comes with is this guy. This is a coin ring anvil. This works really good for a bunch of different things, but the main thing you use it for is when you're sizing coin rings in a six ton press like this guy. This is the thing that you'll put on top of the coin ring and press this into the coin ring. Moving along to all these dies. This is like all the dies that they make, which is kind of awesome. They have this huge gigantic one. This one's basically used for doing like tokens, big huge commemorative tokens and, and things like that. I don't use it a ton, but when I do need it, you know, you need it. So it's kind of nice to have that in the set. Oh, and one thing you need to know about these dies, there's a couple different kinds. So I'll tell you what these numbers mean. So this 1.5 means this opening here is one and a half inches across. 1.6, this is 1.6 inches across. And the 17 degree is the angle of the taper in here. So this is a 17 degree die. We use these 17 degree dies for folding coin rings and then beginning to size coin rings. And then we have these. These are 25 degree dies. And what these ones are used for is getting that fat tire look. And you use it for the last size, size and a half, you go down when you're sizing at the very end. And so that's what those are for. So these dies go from 1.8 inches all the way to 0.7 inches. And if you're wondering what coin rings you need for which, measure a coin and you will know which one it'll fit in. A good example here is a half dollar will fit in this one right here, which is 1.2 inches. So 
this half dollar is around 1.2 inches across. And this is a Swedish wrap kit. And what these are, this is the biggest one. It starts at one inch and goes to 1.4 inches. And you can see there's a lot straighter wall. This is about a five degree angle on these guys. These dies are designed to take larger coin rings and then shrink them down to smaller sizes so we can do our finish sizing in those dies over there. So we use this larger size for Morgan dollars, uh, silver eagles, gold eagles, things like that. And this is the medium size. This goes from 0.8 inches to 1.1 inches. We use these for half dollar and smaller size coins, more or less. And this is the smallest Swedish wrap die that they make. It's 0.8 at the top and 0.6 at the bottom. And this is what we're gonna be using for Swedish wrapping quarters, things like that. So you can run a Morgan dollar through the biggest one, and when you're done going down that far, you can take the Morgan and take it in your second size and make it even smaller. And if you really wanted to, you can take it from there and make it even smaller yet through the very smallest one. And so when I first got these dies, I did that with a Morgan dollar, and I came up with this guy, a teeny tiny little Morgan dollar bead, basically. That was like really, really small. So, totally possible with these dies over there. These are the brass plungers that you use to press the coin down the die with these. So you start with these guys, and then once you're done pressing them down the initial way, down the die, usually what I'll do is switch to those over there. And these are really, really cool. So what you can do with these is you can anneal once, wrap the coin once, and then press it all the way down the die with one press. Well, as you're going down, you'll turn it a couple times, so that way you don't deform the top of your ring. But that saves an absolute load of time. And then this guy, what this thing is, it's called the ring bearer. And what it does, your Swedish wrap dies fit on these, and then you can press a coin ring all the way out the bottom, and this gives it the room to fall out the bottom without damaging it against whatever you're pressing it on. So that's what that's for. I generally don't use this just because I don't like pressing coin rings all the way out the bottom. I've noticed it tends to damage the detail of the ring a little bit. I generally don't recommend it, but if you do, this thing is the tool you would need to do it with. All right, so just to recap, this is all the Swedish wrap stuff that comes with the Master Deluxe kit. And this over here, these are all the dies that you have with the Master Deluxe kit. And these dies, they're meant for doing all your folding and sizing coin rings. So once you're done folding a coin ring and it's too big and you just size it down to a smaller size, that's when you use a Swedish wrap kit. All right, so that comes with it, that comes with it. All your folding cones and your coin ring anvil, your mega stretcher, all that stuff comes with it also. And then the auto punch comes with it. So that's what the Master Deluxe Kit is. That's mostly what Jason sells. All right, so that's it for Jason's tools. Now let's talk a little bit about what we can get at Harbor Freight. Our one-ton Arbor Press. This is what I use for folding all my coin rings. This is just really quick and easy tool to use. I also use all my Swedish wrap dies inside this guy. Oh, this comes from Skip King, King's Coin Ring Tools. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But fantastic tool for quickly pressing your coin ring into a cone shape. And then it also works really, really well for Swedish wrap. It doesn't take long to, to press it. And I know a lot of people think these things are just a fortune, but with a 20% off coupon, it's around 40 bucks. So it's not that big of a deal. The other press that we use all the time is our six ton hydraulic A-frame press. And I use this guy for basically sizing thicker coin rings like Morgan Dollars, gold eagles, things like that, because it just a lot less force is required. And the other things that we use from Harbor Freight, this is a big one. This is a two inch teardrop mallet. And then this brass mallet we get at Harbor Freight also. And this is what we use to cut our hole with our auto punch. This is what we hammer, hammer down with. So a lot of people ask me, why are we not using our press to do that? And the reason being is the press just doesn't fit inside of the 6 ton A-frame press. Just, it's too tall, too tall to fit. 
And to be honest with you, hammering it's just as quick and easy anyway. The other tool we get from Harbor Freight, the nine piece punch and die kit. And with that Harbor Freight punch and die kit, we use the Skip King centering cards. And we get those from King's Coin Rings tools. And what these are gonna do is they center your coin ring and then allow you to punch it with the nine piece punch and die set and get a perfectly centered hole. This is a really inexpensive way of doing it. He has really affordable coin ring tools there that can get you started really inexpensively. And also, I use this guy in my one ton press. So what this thing does is it sits underneath your one ton Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. You can put your dies right in there. And this is a really old one. I've, I've really abused this one over the years. But the other ones, they have a little thing here that perfectly line up with this hole right here. So it keeps it perfectly centered. And now you can press your stuff without having to worry about if it's centered or not. You just put it in there and it's ready to go. So it'll fit with these. It also works with your Swedish wrap dies. Let's talk about ring stretchers. This is what I'm most excited about. All right, so I've got a ton of stretchers lined up here and we're gonna talk about each one. So I have a couple Durstons. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And then I got, this is basically the cheapest version you can get. This is a Chinese made ring stretcher. And then the one I'm really excited about is the new Pepe Tools one. So I'll tell you why I'm really excited about that one. And we'll talk about, let's start here at the very beginning. This is the Chinese made one. So these Indian made ring stretchers are some of the cheapest you can get in the market. You can find them on Amazon, on eBay for around 100, 120 bucks, something like that. And they work really good actually. So the ring stretching part of it, I mean, it's kind of loosely made, cheaply made, right? But the cool thing about it is they do work and the ring stretchers work pretty well. The splines break from time to time, but like I said, they're extremely cheap. So you can get into coin ring making with these guys and you won't have a problem. The only thing that really sucks about them is the die plate that comes underneath of them. If you notice, it doesn't even have one on it. And the reason being is as soon as I get one of these guys, I just throw the plate away because it's really rough. And when you try to use it for sizing, it will actually damage your coin rings or make them go wobbly. So most of the time, and I think I mentioned this in my last video, most of the time when someone calls me and says they're having a problem with coin ring making, this is the first question I ask if they're using this die that comes with this cheap ring stretcher because it's usually the problem. I know most people don't listen to me when I say it, but throw that thing away. It's just gonna cause you more problems. So what you do instead, use Jason's dies, those dies back there under this ring stretcher and you're gonna have the dies anyway if you're gonna be making rings. So you might as well just use them directly under these, underneath this ring stretcher. It'll work great. You can definitely get into coin ring making doing it. I think I used one of these for like five years when I first started making coin rings and I ran a full-time business doing it. So the next thing we're gonna be talking about is the Durston ring stretchers. So these are two Durstons. When I did this toolless video last year, I had one of these guys and this, this one in particular. Let me get a little closer here. We'll look at them a little closer. So these ring stretchers are a ton better than this Chinese one. The main thing that makes them better is the die that they come with, right? So the die is well finished. You can size coin rings in it and it works great for that. So that's their big plus. They also have a stronger handle. You know, back when these first, when we first started making coin rings, we had a problem with the handles breaking quite a bit, but all the ring stretchers have pretty much redesigned their handles so that doesn't happen anymore. So it's kind of a non-issue now, but Durston by far has the beefiest handle. But one thing they don't have going for it, and I've explained this before in my last video, is these splines, they come extremely sharp. So they cut, they cut the tar out of your coin ring when you're stretching it. The inside of the band gets all cut up by that. But that handle though. So this, these ones that I've had, I've had to file down the, uh, the sharp edges on the inside and that's helped it somewhat, but they still have always scratched up my coin rings pretty bad. But okay, so whenever I first got this guy, they were about $100 less. I wanna say they're 400 and some change, almost $500 for these guys now. But back when I got this one, it was like 300 bucks. And the stretcher was maybe cut your coin rings quite a bit, but it was sturdy. It worked good. But then they raised their prices on their stretchers by like a hundred bucks and they lowered the quality of their materials the same time they did it. But the handle. So I bought this one and then I teach classes on coin ring making from time to time. So I bought a bunch of these stupid stretchers thinking I was getting the exact same quality I had before. Found out they were not the same quality. Let's look at these a little closer up. So here's the splines closer up. This is the one I originally bought and it's got, it's pretty, you know, it's not deformed. Everything looks pretty good. They're using higher quality steel on it. 
But now let's take a look at the one that I got after. This is after they raised their prices. They lowered their quality of steel and they started plating it. And look at this is only this was only in use for a few weeks until I realized it's just not worth the struggle. I tried to clean the ring stretcher up so that way it wouldn't cut up the coin rings because it was cutting up the coin rings even more than the first ones were. And then it was leaving these indentations. Every time you stretch it, it would leave an indentation. You move down, stretch it again, it would leave another indentation. And that's not gonna work long term. So because the way their quality has dropped so drastically, I wouldn't even buy one. If I had to choose between the, the Indian made cheap one and a Durson, I would, I'd buy three of those instead. The whole point of having a ring stretcher is so you can stretch a ring. And if it's not good for that, it's not good for much of anything else. Oh, another thing, they plate their dies too. Look at, look at what it does after it sits out for a while. The plating gets broken through a little bit and it starts to rust. So even their dies aren't that good. And I'm not really happy with Durston, so the reasons are kind of piling up. What about that handle though? Now let's talk about the Pepe Tools ring stretcher. Pepe Tools makes all their stuff in the US for one. So it's right here locally for us. That's one benefit, right? The second one is their ring splines are good quality ring splines and they do not cut up your coin rings like the Durstons did. And they're not using bad steel either. They're using good high quality stuff. I've been testing this one for quite a while to make sure it is and it most definitely is. So there's two big pluses right there. But the one thing I'm really excited about, when I first got this, I've been in contact with Pepe for a while about their ring stretchers because I was so unhappy with Durston. And I said, hey, I got some things that you can do to to be a little bit more useful for coin ring makers, and they listened. So their die is what they've changed. I'll see, where is their original one? Here it is. So this is an original Pepe Tools die that comes with their ring stretchers. They're about the same size as a Durston one. Whenever I got this, I said, you know, would be really helpful. This thing has a 17 degree angle on this side, and you flip it around, and there's slightly different sizes, but they're about the same sizes, but they're still 17 degrees. So I'd mentioned, you know, coin ring makers they get a fat tire look by using a 25 degree die when they finish sizing a coin ring and that helps them get the fat tire look. And I said, why don't you design one of these that has 17 degrees on one side and you can flip it over and have 25 degrees on the other. And guess what? They listen. And so now they're gonna be making these dies and they actually have slightly larger sizes. These ones work great for a regular jeweler but we coin ring makers tend to make a little bit larger sizes. So these will size the bigger ones as well. So now they're gonna be selling these. They're not on the market yet. In a couple weeks, you're gonna be able to buy the ring stretcher with this die for coin ring makers. And I think it's gonna be the same price or cheaper than a Durston. So much higher quality, designed for the coin ring industry and in a good deal. So that's why I'm super excited about a company like Pepe Tools. They're actually listening to us and they make quality tools and they make them right here in the US. If you guys have a Durston ring stretcher or even one of those Indian made ring stretchers, you're gonna be able to buy just this die from Pepe and still use your ring stretcher. And that's another cool thing about Pepe. They didn't have to, to sell these as a standalone item. They could have forced you to buy the whole ring stretcher over again, but they're not. You can buy just this die if you wanted to. So just to recap, you can get, if you're starting out, a, an Indian main ring stretcher works just fine. A little bit lower quality, but it doesn't cut up your coin rings when you're stretching. Just make sure you're using Jason's dies underneath of it whenever you're doing your sizing because the die that comes with it is not that good. We've seen the progression of the Durston ring stretchers, how they started off with a little bit better quality, they had some issues, and then instead of listening to us and fixing the issues, they decided to make a lower quality one and charge more for it. And then you have the Pepe Tools one, which is a higher quality one, made here in the US, and it will be coming with a die that is made for the coin ring industry with a 17 degree on one side and a 25 degree on the other side. All right, that's ring stretchers. This is the Pepe Tools combination rolling mill. This is one of my favorite tools in the shop right now, actually. So this particular one is their 190.20A. Um, it's 160 millimeters wide. It opens up to about seven millimeters, I think. I'm pretty sure. But anyway, since I've gotten it and I've had a chance to use it and I've used it a ton, it's a really awesome rolling mill. So you can definitely go, and they have all kinds of different shapes and sizes of rolling mill. This is just the one I, I got. You can start off with an Indian made rolling mill, just like the the no name ring stretchers and see if you really want to use a rolling mill. But once you kind of decide that you do actually want one, actually having a good one makes all the difference in the world. I had no clue how useful one would be until I had a decent one. And then rounding out the Pepe Tools stuff that I have in the shop, I've got this Pepe Tools ring bender. I'm sure you guys see me use it in a handful of videos lately. 
Actually, a friend of mine, Skip King, bought this for me. And when I first got it, I thought, well, I'm not going to really use it. I have no reason to use it. But then as soon as I bolted it on the bench in my shop, I found all kinds of uses for it. So this thing's awesome when you're making like the lumberjack rings that I make or those other pattern rings that I make. If you want to make spoon rings super easy, there's a silversmith friend of mine who has classes in here on Thursdays and he uses it to make spoon rings and he makes just, he makes so many so quickly. As a matter of fact, I should probably do a spoon ring video. I'm sure there's probably a ton of them out there though. And then here's my Pepe Tools disc cutter. I still use this for certain projects. The holes go up a lot bigger, so this cuts out an inch hole, which is kind of nice. And so I use it for different projects from time to time. This one has been around for years and years and I've pretty much abused it and hardly cleaned it. So I feel bad because I haven't cleaned it before the video. Still works great though. It's a fantastic tool. And then this one I just got recently. And to be honest with you, I haven't thought of a really great idea for it yet. So this thing cuts out different shaped discs. And I thought to myself when I saw that in their catalog, I'm like, I gotta buy that and have it on hand just because there's gotta be some use for it that's gonna be really awesome. I haven't taken a lot of time to figure it out yet, but just for fun of it, I made a coin ring and just soldered that on top. I don't know. That's a little hokey, right? But, but that shape would make an awesome earring or pendant or something. That is pretty much it for the Pepe Tools stuff. Oh, and one more Harbor Freight thing. This is my lathe I use from time to time in videos and stuff. Really useful tool to have in the shop. It is a seven inch by 10 inch precision mini lathe by Central Machinery. That's just like the, the Harbor Freight brand. Pretty cool lathe. I actually take it off a little plate and bolted it to this rolling tool box and I put a quick change tool post on there. That way you can get the tools on and off really quickly. And then these guys, adjustable coin mandrels that I get from bangleguy.com. I got one set of these when I first got my lathe and they've been really, really awesome. I cut into them from time to time, so I think it's about time for me to get a new, a new set of them. But they're really cheap, so that makes it pretty handy. This is my sander. I just got this from Bymart. You can get them from Harbor Freight or you can get them from Lowe's, whatever. Really handy to have around just to flatten ring edges and cut down blanks and stuff like that. And here is another tool. I should throw this in there. This one I just get on Amazon. They just come from China and it's a deburring tool. This is a number one question I've been getting for a couple months now. When people are like, what's that blue tool you're using? It's a deburring tool is what it is. And so the ones on eBay, they go for around, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that, nine bucks. And it comes with a pack of 10 of these replaceable blades. These things are super handy whenever you're just getting the, uh, the coin edge off of your coin whenever you get done making it into a ring. Super handy for that. On my soldering slash polishing bench, I have a couple new tools that we haven't had in previous toolless videos. The first one is that guy over there. That is a Tota torch and it's an oxygen propane torch. I got this from a little shop here in McMinnville and so I looked online to see how much they would be and where I could find them but I couldn't find any of these jewelers tips. I didn't look too hard though. A lot of them had those big like welding tips or whatever, metal cutting tips, but this is oxygen or propane and oxygen in this one. And it comes with a handful of these little tips. They have numbers on them. Most of the time I'll use like a number four or a number five. If you're doing finer work, you do like a number three. And if you're doing heavier work, you use like a number seven. It comes with those. One thing it didn't come with though, is this guy. This thing is how you melt all your metal, or that's how I do it anyway. This thing is a rosebud tip and it's got this little end on it. So this is what fits in to these guys. So that's the key there. Make sure it fits the small torches. And then also, as we move on to the bench, this thing is a ring clamp. Whenever a ring's heating up, you put it in there and you can polish it all day long without it burning your fingers or you can put your ring in there and then deburr it without cutting your hand if you slip off. We got various tweezers and third hand things. This is Handy Flux and we use this for um, when we're soldering. You put this flux down first and it keeps the metal clean so there's no oxidation in there so that way the solder will actually stick to what you're trying to solder to. You get these little brushes that I don't know. I think these came from Harbor Freight. Farther over there is where I keep all my like casting stuff. This is the nonstick ingot spray. 
making sure like gold and silver doesn't stick to your ingot mold. This is my ingot mold. So you can use it this way and create bars, or you can take one side off and put it on the other side, and then you can make like bigger bars that way. And then a lot of you guys have asked what this thing is I'm always soldering and annealing on. This is actually a fire panel that my dad's company makes. He makes uh, these liners for burn rooms for fire departments where they test burn things. And this is what lines the buildings to make sure that the building doesn't get burned down. Really awesome. You definitely don't need one of these. I mean, they're super expensive and they're hard to get. The only reason I get them is because my dad makes them. But what you can normally use is like a soldering block like that guy. And they're really cheap. You can find them on Amazon, I'm sure. Really inexpensive. And they also have these annealing blocks. It's like super light. They also have like annealing trays that have like a lot of these little pebble looking things in them. Those are great to use. One thing you don't want to use, and you can see some of my older videos that I have it just because I was rushing to get something to anneal on, which would be like a paver or something like that. Because the sand inside the pavers will heat up and then pop, and then you'll have a bunch of shrapnel in your face. Another handy thing when you're soldering is to know what kind of solder that I use. So this is silver solder, it's wire solder. And this particular one is easy solder. So easy solder just melts at a lower temperature. And so when I'm doing a band that's just only got one solder joint in it, I just use easy. I know a lot of other jewelers say, oh no, you should use hard, but I don't know. I think it's a personal preference. If you know you're only gonna be doing one solder joint, easy is the way to go. It's just super easy to melt. I also have this in hard, hard solder too. So if you're doing more than one solder joint, you wanna start with the hardest solder. And then as you work away from it, you'll get lower, a lower melting point. So that way you don't unsolder the work you've already done elsewhere. So you got like hard, you got hard, medium, easy, extra easy. We've got a lot of various little Dremel bits and stuff over here. One of my personal favorites lately has been this guy. All this is, it's called a flipper or a split shank or something like that. I can't remember, but it's just basically a straight, shank with a split in it and you can cut yourself a little piece of sandpaper and then roll it up on there and it works great for finishing the inside of rings and stuff like that i got a handful of these so i can put different grits on there so i'll usually like run a 320 grit and then like a 600 grit that seems to work really well together and then we have this guy this is a flex shaft and you'll see the top of it here. So this is the, one of the cheaper ones. It's a Euro Tools flex shaft machine. And you know, it works relatively well. Um, there's been a couple issues with it. So this thing is run off of a foot pedal. So whenever you step on it, you can run this at different levels. I like it a whole lot more than a Dremel because you can just vary your speed really easily and turn it off whenever you want. So this is a Fordham lathe and this one's pretty darn filthy, but it's got these little shrouds that you put on and you can actually connect them in the back to a shop vac, which I really, really need to do. So that way all the dust goes out and it captures all the dust. And for jewelers, it's really handy because you can collect metal that way and then have it refined later. And then over here, this is just a regular old little miniature crock pot that I got from the store and inside has pickle. This is pretty handy when you're doing jewelry that's being soldered and whatnot. What I usually do for my pickle when I'm doing coin rings is just have that pickle inside this jar. And I only use it at the end of the day, so I heat up in the microwave, throw my rings in there, and then let them get cleaned that way. But if you're gonna be soldering things, you're constantly needing to clean and then redo something to it and then clean some more. Just turn the crock pot on, and when you throw your stuff in, you can pull it back out. Whenever you get it dirty again, you throw it right back in and you know, it's ready to go. And since we're talking about pickle, this is the pickle that I use. It's citric acid pickle from Nature's Touch. All right, and here's a bunch of just various supplies and little tools that I have more or less collected from around the shop. So this is just a crucible I've been using. I got a couple of them. Depending on what I'm melting, I label them for every different kind of metal I'm melting. You don't ever want to cross contaminate. So you can buy just the handle itself or the crucible by itself. Got that one from Rio Grande, but a lot of different websites have them. And the torch I use for annealing, it's a Burnsomatic TS 4000. I get this at Lowe's. One thing I do to these though, to make them work a little bit better for annealing, is when you first buy them, they have a really pretty pinpoint flame, which is not really what you want when you're annealing. You want the flame to be more spread out, so that way you're not gonna be melting anything. 
I take this tip and then grind it back some, so that way it's a little bit wider. And that seems to spread the flame out really nicely. So when you buy one of these, that's the first thing I would recommend doing. And I, this is the basic Teflon tape that I use for Swedish wrapping. I get that from Lowe's too. I found out the cheap stuff from Harbor Freight, not a good choice to use. It's just really inconsistent. So get you a good brand of Teflon. This is like 10 times more expensive than the Harbor Freight stuff. This is like a dollar a roll versus 10 cents a roll at Harbor Freight. But you ruin one Morgan dollar, it's kind of worth it. And this is what I use to keep all my tools like in the shop, like the ring stretchers and the rollers and the lathe and everything from rusting. This is the Remington. And this is called Pepe Lube. And this is what I'll put on coin rings when I'm putting them in the dies to size them. They just slide more easily. You're less likely of getting a wobbly ring or something like that. This is some borax, just regular borax from the store. This is what I use for a flux whenever I'm melting metal. It seasons your crucible. So that way, whenever you're melting, this stuff becomes like liquidy in there and it more or less creates like a film around the metal that you're melting. That way it doesn't get stuck in there. And then we have a couple different things here. These are for antiquing our silver rings. This is liver of sulfur, XL gel. And this is what I highly recommend. This stuff works really, really well. This is called Black Max from Rio Grande. I do not like this stuff. So this stuff, it looks like it gets a lot blacker really, really quickly. But for one, it's a lot more toxic. And for two, it fades over time. This stuff does not fade over time. This stuff will. And it doesn't seem like it gives a very good, even, you know, darkening color either. It kind of, it's more on the surface than this stuff is. And then from time to time, you'll see me doing a project and I'll be cleaning my ring in here. And all this is in here is a, some water with some ammonia in it and a little bit of Dawn dish soap. And that will clean all the polishing junk off of your, off your work. Really handy to have around. Super cheap, super easy cleaner to make. And then you see me using this a lot. It's just 4 aught steel wool. Really handy for cleaning off like antiquing stuff and just leaves it just a perfect finish, so I really like that stuff. And after I use that, I generally follow it up with a polishing cloth. And these are the disposable jewelry wipes that I get from Walmart. Really cheap, you use them for a while, you throw them away. Finally, we've got this guy. It's really, I don't use it a ton on video. I got a video I'm working on right now that I, that I used it for. And this is my Delf clay casting kit. So, this is the Delft clay. It's like a really fine clay that you can press into a mold. This guy is a, a mold frame that comes with it. And so you press it into one side, you know, and then cut it clean. And then you can press whatever you want to basically cast into there halfway in. Then you'll put this other half on, put the rest of it full of the Delft clay, pound it on there, and then put a release agent inside of it, you know, before you put the second one down you'll put a release agent in there, usually like a baby powder or a talc powder, something like that. And then when you pull it apart, you have two parts of your mold. And then you pull the piece out that you're trying to mold and then you'll, you know, cut yourself a, a pour hole and some air vents and all that. All kinds of stuff you can do with this. It's really an expensive way to get into casting. So I've made signet rings. You'll see that in a future video coming up. So that was a lot of fun. And then also another thing I tried to make just to see if I could, is this double ring, you know? So I just poured that out of silver. It didn't fit in this though. It's a little too big for this one. So what I ended up doing is I went to Lowe's and got some ABS plastic couplers and I made myself my own frame that was a little bit bigger. We're gonna be doing all kinds of really awesome casting projects coming up here really soon. Delft clay is kind of like the introduction to that. And also, you guys can kind of follow my progress as I'm learning too on my other channel. I'll leave a link in the description box for that. I'm gonna start getting into all kinds of really cool processes, like regular jewelry processes. And I'm actually filming my progress as I'm going through a jewelry apprenticeship in the jewelry district down in Portland. And I'm going to try taking some of those techniques that I'm learning there and applying them to coin rings in some way or another and kind of bring you guys along with me in the journey on that other channel. But then this channel, I'll be doing finished projects with those new techniques. So this next year is going to be amazing. So if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss anything.
All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it for the tool list video. I try to be really intentional when I'm recommending tools. I appreciate that you guys actually value my opinion and I don't take that lightly. So I'll continue to do my very best at figuring out the best tools for you guys to use. And another thing, I'm always trying to find good coupons and discounts for you guys too. So if at any point I can find one, I'll put it in the description box below this video. And I just wanna give a special thanks to a lot of these tool makers who are really proactive and really care about this community. Jason from Jason's Works, oh my goodness. That guy has done so much for the coin ring community. And same with Skip King. Skip King from King's Coin Rings Tools. There's a lot of different guys. I feel like I shouldn't be mentioning them all, but those two are really big. Ross from Ross Coin Rings. He came up with the push follower. And David from Pepe Tools. I really appreciate David over at Pepe because he's actually listening to us and uh, improving tools so that way they work better for us. So thanks all you guys for, and if you're just getting into coin ring making, you guys are in store for a super big treat. It's just an amazing thing to get into. Also make sure you check out my other channel. I'll put that link in the description box below also. And you guys, if you want to, you can follow me as I kind of go on this journey on traditional jewelry making. And making jewelry for me, it came out of when I was really sick with Lyme disease and I couldn't hold a regular job. And I know a lot of you guys that I've talked to out there that I've helped get started or, or help with advice. You know, a lot of you guys have got other issues too, health issues and issues that you can't really hold a regular job. And this brings you, you know, brings you income and brings value. And I am just honored to be part of that. So love you guys. Thanks for going on this journey with me. And, and I can't wait to see what comes out of it in the future. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.